Hello all YouTubers, I am Dwello Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this chuckle disturbance coverage for July 20th, 2020. It would be really awesome if you guys did hit that subscribe button and also ring the bell notifications so you guys do not miss my next video. I mean, I cannot believe that we're already more than halfway to 800 subscribers. So please help me get to my next short term goal of 800 and the obviously more lo more longer term goal of 1000 subscribers and another thing please watch the whole video because this this really does help me grow my channel and it's a win-win you know you get the best weather content and i get watch time which i really do need for my channel and also please like and share this video thank you now let's get on with today's video As you guys have hopefully seen by now, uh, my last two videos, I, tr I tried first Invest 99L out here, then Invest 90L in here. Now today we're going to be taking a look at Chocolate Disturbance. All right, this isn't an Invest yet. However, um, we could still be seeing this develop just like all the other ones. that has a 20% chance of development. It could become an Invest sooner or later. Um, so in case you guys don't know, again, if you saw my last videos, then I know I'm trying to explain this a lot in the comments and live chat as best as I could. But... Audio was bad as I was switching to another device. So, and in case, in case I had viewers that saw the videos from the other day but didn't see the other two videos that from today where I did explain it. But now we're back. I hope you guys can hear me now, and and let's get on with today's video. So again, like all the other systems, twenty percent chance of development here. We do have an area of disorganized shadow thunderstorms over Cuba and the Bahamas. And this is associated with a tropical wave. Uh, this will be moving west and maybe a little northwestward turn. Through the Straits of Florida by Key West today and tonight. And we'll be entering the Gulf by Tuesday, the Central Gulf on Wednesday, and the Northwestern Gulf on Thursday. So the National Hurricane Center planned a whole schedule for this thing. All right. <laughs> kind of like, they're kind of like tricky. Like, this is where it's going to be on Wednesday. All right. But it, that could certainly change. But environmental conditions could become conducive for development once the storm reaches the Gulf of Mexico. And I'll be explaining why in today's video. And we, this is the one system that they say on air. Air Force uh, aircraft could be investigating, so that'll be pretty interesting. I don't think it said that for any of the other systems, which is weird. This one's the only one that's actually not an invest, being investigated by the National Hurricane Center, so that's kind of ironic. But tomorrow, this could be in investigated by the Air Force and Hurricane Hunters aircraft. Here is the ocean temperature anomalies where the storm is sitting right now. Um, I believe it is sitting over water. The You can say it's not really like a low pressure, but the center of the wave itself is actually sitting just off the northern coast of cuba like right about there maybe just off the coast so seeing in some above average ocean water um checking in the gulf of mexico where waters are still above average except for the texas and mexico coastline borders there but that's i mean the chances of that storm moving right over that exact same location as invest 90 l is is pretty low but this will be tracking into the gulf of mexico here um, over the next few days and during that time that's when we can see this thing really kick in and start developing why well ocean water temperatures are definitely 30 what 30 that's below freezing no 30 degrees celsius all right which is translates to about 85 or so 85 degrees fahrenheit which is plenty warm for developing a tropical storm here um as of where it's sitting right now sitting right about here in the 30s maybe 29 and continuing to see 30 degrees celsius ocean temperatures through, throughout this whole storm's lifespan here, throughout this whole tropical disturbance lifespan, uh, we're going to be seeing some very warm water, so this storm's going to have a fun time. Tr uh, precipitable water, I didn't really show this in any of my other videos, so if you watched, hopefully you have by now. Here's Invest 99L, it's got a little twirly there, it's kind of rotating, here's your precipitable water. Here's the storm we're talking about in today's video, and right there, and here is Invest 90L. That's why I was talking about the rainfall threat being really high, because we have a lot of precipitable water. Two and a half, closing in on three inches here. A perceivable water there for the Texas and Louisiana coast. Um, but nonetheless, we still got a lot of moisture. There's one system. Here's two. There's three. It's at the three amigos here, right? Uh, that th there's a lot of moisture that's impacting the Bahamas, even southern Florida a little bit, um, as well as northern Cuba. And then over the next few days, maybe the Gulf Coast. So Gulf Coast, between all these tropical systems that we're seeing right now, definitely want to stay uh, on uh, on high alert here for sure. Um, here's what it looks like on satellite imagery. All right. I did slow it down before I started the video, but I'm going to slow it down a little bit more. 
like like I said, it's just a it's just a tropical wave right now. It's just a disorganized area of showers and storms. Ninety L is up there and ninety nine L is out there somewhere. All right, just just wandering across the ocean, just having its good old time, taking its good old time here. But there is our tropical disturbance here, kind of like the third amigo, because it's the only one that's not declared an invest yet by National Hurricane Center, but possibly will be soon. But I'm not really seeing it develop a say quote unquote low center. I mean, I do see a little low. I mean, I do see some spinning here. That's where the tropical disturbance center is right there, right about this location here. But this could be developing over the next few days. So let's take a look at our modeling. So here's GFS model here. Um, in case you don't know where the storm system is by now, this is Wednesday morning. Here's where it enters the Gulf of Mexico. And this is where things get interesting. All right. Because we do have sort of a low center here. Kind of like how Invest 90L looks right now. You got a low center. All the rainfall is to the east of the low center. All right. And there you go, making landfall in the northern Gulf Coast here. Um, as we head through, you know, late this week into the weekend here. How about those precipitation totals? How much rainfall are we going to be seeing here? Um, along this storm's path, about two to four inches of rainfall, more or less. All right, maybe like just outside of that, maybe about one, two inches. But if you happen to be in that bullseye, like Texas, Louisiana coastline, maybe the Key West and northern Cuba, Probably about two to four inches, which is still a lot of rainfall, especially if you get it in a short amount of time here. Um, how about the cyclonic vorticity signature? Not completely horrible. Um, these are all going to be smaller scale systems, except for 99L that has the best chance of becoming a hurricane, actually. All right. But there's a storm coming in through Texas and Louisiana as we head through Thursday afternoon and through Friday morning. That's where it makes landfall right near Houston, Galveston. It's inland by the day. Um, by the afternoon on Friday. So keep that in mind. It's going to be moving inland there through late week. Um, how about those wind shear anomalies? If we want to take a look at those. Because uh, where it's sitting right now, our wind shear is actually above average, surprisingly, by about 15 or 20 knots or so. All right. And then even over the next few days, as it heads into the Gulf of Mexico, we're still going to be seeing above average wind shear. And like I said, wind shear is not good for delivery tropical systems. It is the complete opposite of severe weather, where severe weather, we like wind shear. We don't necessarily like wind shear in this perspective, um, but we're going to have to see, right? Because sometimes we can even have subtropical development, which isn't that common this far south, close to the equator. But sometimes it can happen if the wind shear is a little high, water is a little cold, but water seems pretty warm to me, so I don't think we're going to have to be worrying about that. But maybe some above average wind shear could be harmful down the road for the system. How about the gem model now? Let's kind of switch over to the gem model here. Um, and they really have no confidence in this thing at all. I mean, I just see a great that area of isolated showers over the northern Gulf. I don't really see much that they are developing out of this. Um, but if we take a look at the cyclonic vorticity signature later on, we might be able to see it a little bit better. But still, they do have an area of two to four inches of rain sitting here. So some storm tracked along here at some point. It's like invisible uh, on their radar. But still, two to four, even close to eight inches on the south central Louisiana coastline. All right, but that's... That's very isolated, and that's kind of well, that's actually a little bit offshore. But that's a little 8 inch bullseye right there. How about the cyclonic vorticity signature now? All right, so like I said, if, if you're able to look at it this way, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Looks like a tropical depression, or maybe even a very big tropical storm to me. Um, maybe getting a tad bit of strength, actually, might even lose a little bit of strength once it hits landfall, which is what it should happen if, if, we have a Category 1 hurricane after it makes landfall, and that's going to be pretty freaky. All right. But as we head through time here, you see it starts the weekend. It's moisture it gets torn apart. It gets thrown up by a jet stream and carried up in the northeast eventually as we have further out in time. Uh, gem, how does the gem model look with those wind shear anomalies? All right. The Caribbean, where uh, 99L is bound to go, possibly. So I'm below average wind shear, so good times for them, but not good times for this truck was starting to here, but it's not really an invest yet, so I can't call it anything. But still, about 20 or so not to win share above average, which is still a decent amount. Actually, if we go to the actual wind shear values right here, uh, you'll actually be able to see how the wind shear looks. Um, this is what our storm system is seeing right now, right over the Bahamas. Um, at times, the wind shear could get a little bit more manageable, like, you know, 20, 15 knots. But then at certain times, the wind gets close to 30, 35 knots, and it becomes a little bit more un unbearable, unmanageable. Um, but we're going to have to see. 
right? Because a lot of different things can happen here. And who knows? We might even have like an upper level low here, like in the way upper levels of the atmosphere. And that could really actually encourage a lot of wind shear. I could strengthen the wind shear. So and that would not be good for this low pressure system. So we're going to have to see. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Just as the last map here, just wanted to show you guys where chocolate systems usually track during the month of July. Uh, usually through the Caribbean and Gulf Mexico, which is where 99 L could go. Another track is maybe even up the East Coast, like we saw with Chocolate Storm Fay. So, all these tracks are certainly possible for all three of these Chocolate Systems, the three Amigos. Will they stick together, or will they split up? We're going to find out in a couple of days. So, thank you guys for today's video, for, for watching today's video. I am The Weather Dude, signing off. Till next time. Catch you guys in the next video.